Hi, friends. Oh, goodness. Can't even see me. There we go. Let me pull you down on. Like, what are we even talking about? All right. There we go. Okay, I think we're set up. Hi, welcome, welcome. Um, if you are catching this live, you got here, well, actually a little bit early because we don't start for about three minutes, but a couple things before we begin. Make sure that you have downloaded this. This is your manual, this is your workbook. This has everything that we're gonna go over in it. Um, so you can just follow right along. And if you're catching me live and you didn't download it, no worries, just grab a pen and paper so you can take notes, you can go back later, download it, fill it in. But it did come to you in your email. If you are catching the replay of this, you can just download it right below where you're seeing my beautiful face. <laughs> so just go down there and download your workbook so that you are ready to hit the ground running. I'm gonna open up the chat so that as we get um, some live people in here, awesome, perfect, maybe set it off to the side so I don't look like I'm, there we go. Um, as we get some people in, you guys, yeah, okay, so just if you will comment on your name in the chat and where you're hailing from, just so I know that you're here, hi. Oh, I'm gonna have to move my chat box yet again because it's all in the way of my face. All right. <laughs> All right, so just comment, let me know that you're here. Please make sure that you downloaded this workbook. Um, and depending on how you're logging in, I do have this on Zoom. I have a couple of people on call. If you're on the Zoom, you have chat available. If you're listening to the stream um, audio, you do not have the chat available, but you can, um, you can just chime in in your head and tell me where you're from. So here is your workbook. Make sure you have that. Life coaching strategies for fitness professionals. We are gonna start in about two minutes. So get back, get a pin. You are here um, live with me. I'm Gretchen Gegg. If you're catching the replay, no worries. It's still awesome information. You're just gonna be catching everything a little bit later. So go ahead and get that with you. You need your pen and you need your workbook or at least a piece of paper to keep track of everything that I'm going to say to you today. Um, again, if you're live, this is kind of fun. I feel like I never do webinars in the morning, um, but you never know. I wanted to see who could chime in. And of course, not everybody could get on Zoom. So some people are having to listen in just audio and that's fine too. Uh, but I'm really, really glad that you're here. Uh, we're not gonna do the video Zoom today. This is just webinar, this is just me chatting. So we are gonna jump right in in about one minute. Um, today we are going over five specific strategies. So if you, this is designed for fitness professionals. If you're not a fitness professional, please, please still hang out, still go through this whole thing. Um, but it is designed to show fitness professionals how they can use life coaching strategies to impact their fitness business. So that being said, we're gonna jump all the way in all the way in. All right, I can only see one name, so that's fine, no worries. Um, if, you're, if you're catching the replay, that doesn't matter to you at all. That's just me on my end, like checking between multiple devices who I've got on here. Um, let's just jump in. So if um, we've met before, and I think everybody that's on live, I think we have met before actually, but catching replay, I don't know, because I don't know when you're gonna see this. But I am a fitness professional. My name is Gretchen Gag, and I'm known for getting people who are like anti everything fitness to actually start investing in their health. And I help other fitness professionals do the same thing. Um, in fact, that is kind of like the next greatest thing that I'm doing is I'm investing energy into you guys as fitness professionals to help you take the strategies that I know and that I love and use them on people that you're already working with. Like I, I'm not here to teach you a new plan, to teach you a new type of workout, to teach you a new um, type of like nutrition program to teach people. You know that stuff, like you've been trained. Um, I've been trained there. What I'm here is to take the things that you haven't been trained in, the things that I did my work on and saw that were very, very helpful with my clients, and just hand over these strategies for you to see some success in your business. So that is what this workbook is all about. I'm shoving like two hours worth of content into one hour. I promise you'll get out in one hour or maybe a little bit less. And that's um, 
all in this workbook. The value of this, you're looking at about $300 worth of value in this webinar. So please stay till the end because that's when you will get the strategies on how to put all of this in place. Um, but all right, everything's good. Everything's good to go. I want to start everybody with a story. So I've, I've already told the story. Let's see, what webinar number are we on? Technically number five. Um, and who knows how many of you have caught the replay. So if you've heard the story before, bear with me. If you haven't heard the story before, I want you to just kind of think about and sit for a minute and see how it resonates with you, okay? So I don't know if you've ever been to a fitness conference. I would assume most fit fitness professionals have been. But I was at a fitness conference once, and this one was about, I guess, three years ago. It was before my little girl was born. She's three, maybe a little bit longer. Um, but I was at this big fitness conference, and um, everybody there was so jazzed up about fitness. I mean, if you've never been to one of these conferences, like, let me paint the picture for you. You walk in and everybody is in like the latest, greatest fitness fashion. Um, they're super excited about doing really hard fitness things. They are doing friendly competition back and forth. And it's just a bunch of people who really, really love like fitness and working out and health and nutrition. And they're talking about fitness. They're talking about health and nutrition and they're with all their BFFs from all over the world. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I've been to a lot before, but there was something about this one in particular that really hit home with me. So I had a great time at the conference, but then I don't know if you ever went to like church camp. I was thinking about church camp here. Like you go home or some kind of summer camp or a sports camp, this works too. And then you go home from camp and all of a sudden you're like, you have this big letdown because you realize like that's just a very small percentage of the population that loves the thing as much as you love the thing. And, and then it's like, oh, I want to go back. Like I want to live in that little world. And I start to think, I'm like, well, wait a second. What, like, yeah, I like hanging out with those people, but why, why did I get in this industry? And it really like hit home with me. Like the things that I was doing there and the things that everybody there was attracted to, like maybe some of my classes at home would want to do that, but the general person on the street didn't want to do that. And I, I was really like almost a moment of conviction. Like, wait a second, I got in this industry because I want to help those people who are underserved. Like I want to be of service. That was my whole goal. I want people who don't already know to love fitness and help and nutrition as much as I do. That's why I got into the industry. So I, I decided to look at the numbers because I'm a numbers person. I was like, I really want to find out like how, how many people are the, are what percentage of our population are the people that are at this conference genuinely serving? And so I looked it up. I, I did the whole Google thing. I, sometimes, you know, people say like, I research it. Uh, you Googled it. Let's be very clear with what you did. So I Googled it. Um, but the, about the average answer that I could come up with was 14% of the population in the U S has a gym membership. And I picked gym membership because for the most part, that is where people are coming into contact with the trainer, like in a, like in this, if you're catching me live, like where I'm actually talking to you or you, I'm pointing over here at my phone call people. I point like I'm on, I'm talking to you. I'm not pre-recorded. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm having some kind of back and forth with someone. And this is even a little more recorded than normal, but that's where I was like, okay, that's where people are coming in and getting this one-on-one. -on -one. So gym membership. So 14% of the U S and I was like, well, okay, but how many people actually use that gym membership? Feel free to throw me a guess. The number is half of those people, like about half of those people. So we're looking at 7% of the population even steps into a facility where they could come in contact with working in a small group um, or one-on-one -on -one or a large group with a fitness professional. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, so already like that's less than 90%. I mean, yeah, of course it's less than 9%, but that means more than 90% is not being served by those people. And I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's think. Like when these people, when this 7% comes into the gym, how many of those people are buying the personal training packages? 
or going to the group fitness classes. Now, if you own a boutique studio, probably it's like 100% of those people. But for a lot of gyms, like the big box gyms, it's a very, very, very small percentage of people that are actually interacting. So I'm like, you know, if I'm actually in this to serve people that don't already love fitness, right? If I'm in this to serve people, that was my goal. Then I am not even seeing the people that need to be served. I'm just not. So I was like, what in the world am I doing? I, I seriously, y'all, I was like, total like hands and knees. Like what, what is this? Like I even, I even said to someone at the time, I was like, I realize that I'm just making fit people fitter, which is fine and dandy. Like it's keeping people motivated, but it's not like for me, I wanted to serve people who were not being served. And that, if that's not you, you will still get a lot out of this webinar friends. But I want to let you know why I created what I created why I even have a passion of bringing life coaching strategies to fitness professionals. Um, so at that, after that moment, when I had the total, like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? I decided I needed to make some really big decisions. Um, a couple of the decisions that I made, I went through some additional certifications, uh, got more, um, information on like the psychology behind fitness, the, the physiology when it comes to, like the I guess really that's cognitive psychology, but the physiology that our brain is made up of that helps these decisions stay in place. Like what is actually happening to make people change? And I finally decided, I finally decided that I was going to sit for my life coaching certification. And it took a little convincing because I, I didn't really know what a life coach did. And you might be here too. Like if you know what a life coach does, awesome. If you don't, this is my best explanation. A life coach is the mediator between your self now and the self of your vision or the self you want to be. The life coach helps you along the way, asks you the right questions, gives you the right techniques. Um, it's like a mesh of psychology and physiological techniques and really modern, modern methods of behavior change that help people make changes. And I was like, holy cow, like if I could take this and give it to the fitness world, that would be amazing. And so that's what I did. I went through... Um, everything I knew from my, my master's in kinesiology, everything I knew for my life coaching cert, um, anything I learned along the way, my fitness cert, and then psychology. I was very like, you know, when you're like, wow, that's why I made that decision way back in my life. It led me to here. Um, in undergrad and graduate school, I did my outside area. So it was a minor in grad school, outside area. I mean, minor in undergrad, outside area in grad school in psychology. I'm like, oh, that is why I love psychology so much. So I have all these techniques and I went through and and picked the ones to try out on a group of people, right? And they were people that were coming to me for fitness and, and y'all, they worked. These strategies that I'm going to teach you today, they worked. They, um, one client has lost over 250 pounds, started with me. Um, one client actually used what the techniques to help overcome a family tragedy that was keeping her from working on herself. Another client, and this seems like, seems like such a silly thing to us, but it was so big for me. She, she was the anti everything fitness client, she, but now she loves it. She looks forward to her workout. She has a child. She's being an example for that child. And there's many, many other stories, but those are my three biggies. And, and I share their testimony on my website, but that led me to create the Mimo method. And that's what I'm sharing with you today is um, my five part strategy to taking life coaching principles and meshing them with what you already know about fitness to give people um, this thing called the MIMO method. MIMO stands for mind into motion because it reminds us that it's all mindset first. So long story longer to get us started in where we're going today with strategy number one. So you're in your workbook. We're right here. Strategy number one. Um, the first strategy that we have to use with our clients in the Nemo method in order to put their mind into motion is we have to do assessment. But I think in the fitness world, we have been taught assessment wrong. Um, we have been taught assessment in a way that does not invite clients into our facility and does not keep them coming back. Um, we, we do two things. Like there's two beliefs here in assessment that I don't think help our clients. One is that it's only before and after. Like, I'm going to take a picture of you here, and then I'm going to take a picture of you at the end, right? But I'm not really going to deal with anything along the way. 
or I'm going to weigh you at the beginning and I'm going to weigh you at the end, but I'm not really going to deal with anything along the way. Um, and a better belief is that assessment is continuous and it's body positive. It's more than just that physical assessment. In fact, every time they come to you, um, you should be asking them like, hey, how is this going? Like, not just how are you today, but you have enough information about them that you're actually asking them an assessment question. Um, and that it kind of leads into belief number two that we have is that assessment is only for physical. So assessment is only for like height, weight, um, waist to hip ratio, uh, trying to think of all the things, body fat. We, we think that that's good assessment because we are thinking about what we want to change in the physical realm, right? But I'm telling you, if most of the world, most of the world, if they knew that the first thing, or they do know, the first thing they're going to do when they see most trainers or most gyms is they are going to be put on a scale and maybe they get a free body fat assessment. Guess who probably doesn't want that, right? So if they know that's going to happen, that's already a barrier. You cannot help them because they do not want to come in and get weighed and measured and all that stuff. So the tool that I've given you to make this body positive, um, we'll talk a little bit about what I mean by body positive, is in this bonus toolkit. It is the six pillar assessment um, tool. So it shows you there's much more than just physical health going on. And um, in my coaching program for the MIMO method, we go into depth about what all of these are, but you basically go down this list with them and you just ask them to rate what they like one to 10, one being the lowest, 10 being the highest. How do you feel about your physical health, your mental health, your relationships, your environment, your finances, your spirituality, which spirituality, I will tell you, that's a hard one for a lot of people because they equate it with religion. All I say is, is your soul satisfied? Like how, how soul satisfied are you? Like, do you feel like you're, you're satisfied? It helps you kind of decide how much personal development they're doing. But this takes the emphasis off of the body. And you see right now there's a big movement toward body positive. So there's no better time to get these strategies because people know that weighing and measuring isn't the best technique. They know that, um, you know, looking in a mirror all the time and judging yourself in a mirror, not the best technique. And as trainers, as uh, group fitness professionals, we can talk to them about a lot of other things that will A, show them that we're really interested in them and B, lead them to think outside the physical body. And there's always a trickle down effect. These are all interrelated. So even if you start giving them changes on like keeping their environment like clutter free, maybe, they'll start to see a decluttering in the rest of their life. It just, it totally works. Um, and another thing that I like about this assessment tool and doing assessment this way is people, they love to talk about themselves, right? Um, so the second half of this, of course, they're already talking about themselves, but even to get more into it, we have them rank them on a scale of one to 10 of their importance. So one is, it's not very important to me at all. 10, it's very important to me. So what you're getting is you're getting a conversation with them. You're getting a conversation with your clients day one. Um, if you're taking them through the MIMO method, this is what you would do in your very first meeting together in the first week. Um, and you would talk about these kind of things. And I mean, people, they don't want to be weighed and measured, but they like, I mean, people click those Facebook quizzes all the time because they want to talk about themselves. They want to give you information and, and we can like very strategically look at this then and see where they have, you know, a high rank and a low rate. And we're like, that's what I need to be asking them about. So you have those very specific and ongoing assessment strategies that you can do with people. Um, and if you're just wanting these tools to maybe like enhance, you know, a group program, this just shows you things that you need to be um, cueing in your class or talking about that's not physical related as you interact because group fitness doesn't have to be all like do this do this do this do this you should have such a back and forth that you're able to talk about the benefit of coming to your class on all of these components of um of wellness really that's what we're looking at and it's funny i always have people who like they get pushed back on the finances like what does that have to do with me and i'm like well I'm assuming that you also are in the fitness industry to make money, right? Like I'm, I'm sorry. Like 
bottom line, it's your job. Most of the people that are here, it was, it's either their job now or it was their job um, in the past. And, or it's maybe it's somewhere where you're wanting to do more in the future, but it is the, um, the financial aspect is very important to encourage people to think about and to have vision and strategies around because that is where they can grow and they will grow into your program. Um, so number, that was number one, the body positive assessment. We're just going to say make assessment fun. Number one, make assessment fun. It rhymes. Why not? So that was number one. Let's move on to number two, the second strategy. And I love, I love them all. I'm going to say that about all of them. So just get over it. I'm going to say, I love them all. <laughs> um, at the end, somebody's going to be like, you said you love all of them. I do. I do. I do. I wouldn't be telling you about this if I didn't love them. So strategy number two is create vision versus set goals, but create vision is the big one here. Um, goals, like goals are so 2019. Uh, they kind of are though. So goal, goals are important, but all of us, everyone in the fitness industry has been trained on how to get their client to set a goal, right? A smart goal, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. But if we give our, if we start to work with our client on these goals, if we're doing it right, like the stretch of a goal should probably just go about a quarter of the year. It shouldn't go five years in the future, 10 years in the future. And this whole time bound thought of a goal tells your client that if they don't reach their goal by whatever like time they set on themselves, then they failed, right? They failed to reach their goal. So instead, I like to help my clients create vision. This is where they want to be. This is what they're striving for. And there's not really like a time limit set on it. It's just something they know is going to happen. And they are going to be taking action every single day to move toward this vision, right? Um, and I have them create uh, two, different, two different things around their vision that are really important. The first one, I have them create vision statements. And you actually have this um, in your toolkit you have the six pillar vision statements this was a bonus that was along with that workbook um you just ask them like what does you know i start with the idea of perfect like if you are 100 percent happy if you hit like a the perfect rate and the perfect rank on that assessment tool what would it look like what do you want and i encourage them to dream pretty big right um, and we go through all of the different components with them. And this is usually done like maybe week, week two in the Mimo Method. The Mimo Method is a 12 week long program. The first four weeks are all spent on preparation. Um, so this is something we take them through like in week two. We would start to create some pretty big vision. And, and people have to be prompted to dream big here because they need something that they're constantly working for and something that they're excited about. Goals can be exciting, but it's really hard for people to get um, super jazzed up about like losing 20 pounds in three months or something like that, right? I don't even know if that's like the right amount. I'm just throwing that out there. But it's really hard for people to get jazzed up about that. You need something bigger. I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, one person who started working with me and she was very, very overweight. And we started talking about some of her vision and creating these vision statements. And one thing that she said was, well, I want to lose enough weight so that I'm able to ride in the um, Harry Potter ride at Universal Studio. And I was like, talk to me about that. And it talked to me about that. And I started asking her um, some kind of powerful questions. And these are, I wrote, I wrote these down actually um, for you guys so that you can get, get deeper into their vision. Like, well, how would you show up? Like, what would that look like you walking into Universal Studios and why do you want this so much? Like what, what do you need to do more of to make that happen? Um, and then what do you need to do less of to make that happen? And the more of was like, I need to move my body more. And we had, we had to come up, this is where you guys are going to be really instrumental because you're able to come up with these plans for that physical movement. Like, what do you do when someone is 250 pounds overweight? How do you work them out? Like that is a plan that you need to have if you really want to serve the other, the rest of the population, right? And maybe you're, that's not your goal client, but the person that can't move well, they can't flip the tires. They can't jump on the step. Like, what are you going to do? 
so we had this whole conversation and I'm like, well, what would it mean to you? She's like, I would show my children that I'm young and I can have fun and I would be able to enjoy myself and not be embarrassed. And that is what like her vision boiled down to. Let me tell you though, this client of mine recently, Universal Studios actually paid for her whole trip and she rode the Harry Potter ride and they filmed the whole thing. Like it was a big, big deal. So that's the power of vision. That is the power of vision. If, if her goal, if I would just say, okay, let's just set a weight loss goal. Let's just set a weight loss goal. It would not have had the same in, um, impact on her. And now, you know, she's all over social media now because of this, like, and it's such a novel concept, right? She's got this list of things that she's going to do. It's essentially a vision board, but people are blown away because there's no one out there teaching this, right? There's no one out there teaching this. Like she's all over TikTok. Like she has tons of followers just because she knows how to create vision. So what I'm, what I'm teaching you is not just like hokey stuff that I think works. This is stuff not only that works, but it is, it's getting more and more and more attention. And for right now, if you're catching this live where most of us are in this like shelter in place scenario because of the coronavirus or COVID-19 and you can take this to your clients virtually, you can get clients started virtually right? Because two weeks in and we're talking about them. Yeah, I'm giving them some action strategies, but that's not what I'm focusing on. What I'm focusing on is this assessment and then whether or not they get the workout done, I'll be honest, in the first four weeks when I'm working with them, I'm kind of like, okay, I want you to look at it. And I get, I give my clients some virtual workouts and I say, really, you only have to watch it. I say that to them because it's hard enough for them to think that this is possible. So you want to give them easy, easy wins. Um, and moving toward a, a vision and assessment, that's going to start them building that momentum. So that was the second strategy. So number one, we make assessment fun. Number two, we create vision. Number three, strategy number three. Now we're still kind of in that preparation phase. We're still getting our clients to the point where they can do it. But this one is way more strategic. It's not assessment. It's not vision. This is a strategy. So, um, Whenever you are teaching someone to lose weight or to get fit, you are essentially teaching them how to have a behavior change of some, in some way, shape or form. And there's a lot, you can go back and look at psychology. There's a lot of ways to teach behavior change, but most of us still treat ourselves like a rat in a cage, right? Like touch this, that was bad. Touch this, that was good. Okay. I should have more of this. If I touch this, it's bad. Well, then we do like, okay, well, I'm going to put like a piece of celery over here, but I'm going to put a cupcake over here and you're going to get shocked. Well, I'm still sometimes going to go for the cupcake because it's so good. And you hear this in our language. Like we're not thinking that way or we don't think that we think that way, but here's the language that you hear. Oh, I was so good today. I was so good. I worked out. I ate right. Check it out. I was good. And then um, the cupcake days, right? You hear, oh, I was, I was so bad. I was so bad. I y'all ate like the whole pan of brownies. I was so bad. And I mean, when I hear this, like just with my background and what I know and what I teach, I always want to be like, why are you letting, you know, what you intake define who you are? Why? Like, that's so silly that you are not your food. Um, you hear people say you are what we eat, but we're not going there. So that's what I mean by modern is we take into account like the human condition. We take into account humanity, who we are, and that we make decisions, and we have good days and bad days, air quotes there, right? Oh, I'm making the air quotes. I'm sorry, my audio people, I'm making air quotes. <laughs> um, so yeah, you have all these things that are, it's more than just a yes and a no. Um, there has to be some wiggle room in there, or it's not sustainable and maintainable. Um, and if we also, if we associate like, eating cupcakes and not working out with bad behavior, then when our clients feel like they've been bad, they're not going to want to show up for us. So we want to be able to give them this leeway. And one of the ways that I teach behavior change is I teach it through the ramp method. Now, this is my method that I've developed that works phenomenally with clients. And I want to give it to you today. So for every single thing that I give them, they've got to have these four things in place. After we've talked about assessment, after we've talked about vision, the next thing we do is we create, we create their ramp, right? We create their ramp. That's a great visual too. Imagine someone like going up a ramp toward a goal. The R stands for routines. 
they have to have some routines in place because habits are what um, make changes. And by saying routines in place, you do a couple things. You make sure that it's something that they're adding in, not taking away. To, if you are working with a client and the first thing you do is you ask them to stop doing something, that is setting them up for failure. The very first thing that you should do is you should be offering them some kind of routine they can add in. And this would be, this would happen on weeks like three and four in the first four weeks of working with my, um, my clients as a Nemo coach. So I, I always set up an AM and a PM routine that are like easy, easy wins that just book in their day. And generally they have nothing to do with physical health. It's just their mental health. It's just getting their mindset triggered that they have control over their life. It's, it works. It's like a psychological principle that works. You set them up to do some easy wins in the morning, set them up to do some easy wins in the evening. And I'm talking like make your bed. That's what I mean by an easy win and set out your clothes for the next day. Those are easy wins. Like, and I don't let them get more than five things like very simple, easy wins because they're checking a box. They did something that's putting them on the right path in the morning, in the evening, they're bookending their day and it tells their brain they have control. They are in control. The next thing that we, Oh, along with routines as well, it's really important that when you start adding in additional routines, like, um, if they do want to work out every day, then you help them come up with something that's going to trigger that. So any habit, and this is something that I learned when I studied BJ Fogg's work, um, BJ F O G G out of Stanford. He's actually a psychologist who then started working with the marketing department because he was so good at creating habit. Um, but what he teaches is that to have a really habit, it needs to be something that you're adding in that's tiny. Um, that's easy to do. That's like low, low motivation is needed. Um, easy to do. You have a high level of ability, but then there's also a trigger linked with it. So like if they're wanting to, and workout may have been kind of a big one that's hard, but maybe they're wanting to move their body more. So you say, okay, every time, and this used to work really well with when we had a lot of commercials on television. Now people like pay for commercial free, but let's say like for me, I don't pay extra for whatever Hulu I have. So I still have commercials on Hulu. So you say, okay, whenever there's a commercial, just stand up. Like that's how tiny, just stand up. Next thing, when they get down with that, it's like, okay, stand up and just walk in place. Okay. When there's commercial stand up, walk to another room and come back. So you see how these triggers can start to cascade down as you create routines. And that's why I start with the AM and PM because you always get up, you always go to bed for the most part. And that, and that's, that's in flux. Like it doesn't always have to happen at the same time. So that's what I mean by make sure there's a trigger. The A stands for affirmations. Now, if you remember, we created some vision statements. Um, and I'm not going to go into affirmations because this is, this is actually an entire like, uh, lecture in the Nemo coach program. When you, um, that when you become a Nemo coach, I teach you how to do this really well. And it's a, it's a process. But we take those vision statements and we turn them into affirmations that they tell themselves um, in the morning or whenever out loud. I like to say, look at yourself in the mirror if you can, you don't have to. Um, but they're statements that they're, you know, they're positive, they're future oriented, and they, they have to do with where they want to be. It has to do with their vision. And ideally, your client is saying this out loud to themselves every single day. And then the M um, and that has to do, I keep forgetting how these questions on the bottom that the affirmation part has to do with metacognition because it, it primes their brain to start thinking about what they're thinking about. And that's why I'm saying it out loud is so important too, because it's adding like your brain is hearing it. So it's priming it to start thinking about what they're thinking about, because we can't just change a thought with a thought. We have to be very, very strategic and how we approach that. And we're actually going to talk more about thoughts and metacognition later, but um, that's where we are with the affirmation. So the M stands for motivation. And the beautiful thing is you've already established their motivation by asking them all the questions related to their why and figuring out their why. And this is something that you can use, not against them. You never want to say like, oh yeah, because I thought you wanted blah, blah, but you want to remind them like, and ask them questions about, do you remember, do you remember why this was so meaningful to you? 
Because I do. Do you want me to remind you right now? Would that help? Would it help if I reminded you and we talked through your why, we closed our eyes and we imagined what it was going to be like to be in that position. So that is motivation. You've already established it. So you get to give it back to them or ask them for it again over and over. And then the P, you know, the P is so important because this is your plan. This is your action plan for them. So as you move into like out of the first four weeks of like preparation and setting them up for success, giving them easy physical wins, the middle part of their journey, um, if you're going through like a MIMO method program or you're a MIMO coach and you're taking them through this, then the middle four weeks are all about action. So this is the P is what you're going to give them and they need to know like, all right, let's set it up. How many times are we going to meet together and train or how many, you know, workout videos that I give you, are you going to do every week? Um, maybe you're doing some diet coaching with them. Maybe you're a registered dietitian and you're like wanting to use this with your clients. You're laying out the plan. You're giving them, um, you know, a lot more action right there. And you're like, this is what's going to get you over the hump. This is what's going to get you there. So, um, the P is completely up to you, but it's super important. You've got to come in with an action plan that you're going to give them in the middle four weeks. That's going to make big, big results. And you already know how to do that. That's what I'm not here to teach you. Um, I'll teach you what you're doing in the middle of four weeks in just a second. That's a little more complicated. So that was strategy number three. You have to have um, the ramp method in place. So strategy one was make assessment fun. Strategy two was create vision. Strategy three was put the ramp method in place. And then strategy four is the action phase, the middle four weeks. Bust through limiting beliefs or like um, truly, truly bridge that mind-body gap. So in, in the middle four weeks, here's the challenge that we as fitness professionals have <clears throat> because most of us have the plan will come easy. The plan will come very easy. But when their clients give us pushback, that's not the easy part. And I, and I hear trainers all the time try their best with this. Like we, we're doing the best that we've been taught to deal with limiting beliefs, right? So imagine that you have a client and they, you're trying to just get them to um, lower their sugar intake, right? And so you've given them some positive strategies. You're like, eat more vegetables. Um, and I'm trying, this was an, I'm going to give you a scenario from an actual client here. This is an actual, like not only a Nemo client, but she um, is one of my, one-on-one -on -one life coaching clients right now as well. <clears throat> and I mean, she's a lifer. Like she's, she's come to me for a lot of stuff. She's a lifer. So we worked on this together. Um, we were trying to lower her sugar intake and she's like, no matter what I do, I cannot stop eating sugar. She's like, after dinner, it's like, I have to have it. If I don't have it, even if it's just a tiny bit of sugar, I have to have it after dinner. Now, what I see a lot of people in the fitness industry doing is they immediately jump into consultant mode and they immediately say, well, how about you have some strawberry sorbet instead made with Splenda, right? And they jump into all this consultant mode and they start putting their own issues on this person. And it's not, it's not a bad thing. They just, you guys, they don't know any better. You probably are like, that's exactly what I would have suggested. Like, and my client even told me this. She's like, if I hear from one more person, like eat some fresh fruit, I'm going to lose my mind. She's like, that's not what it's about. Like I have to have the sweet. And so the stuff that we know to tell them, we're setting them up for failure and they don't want to come back to you because they admire you and they love you. And they don't want to say, well, I didn't do it. I didn't do what you said because you're going to think you're going to be upset because you're like, I, oh, I didn't give them a strategy that worked. You're going to be upset because they didn't um, do it. And it does, it creates this like, and then eventually they're like, okay, who? thank goodness. I don't have, I like all my personal training sessions are done or like my membership is hit its peak because I don't want to hear anymore. And I know if you're, if you're a group exercise instructor, you might be thinking like people don't really come to me that they do. They do hang out after class. Sometime people ask you the, weird, and some of you are going, yes, Yes. Like in your mind, you're thinking, Oh my gosh. Yes, they do. They come up to me with the weirdest stuff. I can't tell you like, um, how many times they said, can I ask you a question? So I have this and it's like, 
which is somehow related to health and fitness, and you're expected to know the answer. Um, <clears throat> all those things that they're coming at us with are the reasons that they, the stories that they tell us where they can't actually do something, those are all limiting beliefs, and they stem from somewhere much deeper than their inability to make it work. So I always say to you, like, don't believe their story. Like my, so my client's story was, well, it's always there. Well, if I don't keep it in the house, I buy it. Like, I just have to have it. Like, it's just something that I love. And her thing was, I must be addicted to sugar. Could have been true. But I was a little smarter than that. And I asked her some questions. And this is where you should always start. When you're tempted to go into consultant mode, which is the mode where you tell them to do something, you should catch yourself and you should always ask them questions. Well, and so I would ask her things like, well, how long have you been doing this? Well, for most of my life. I said, okay, well, we're gonna have to think back pretty far to see where this started. So, um, and you can kind of follow along on this thought tool because this is the kind of thing that you'll use with them. So I was like, all right, so you're eating, eating dessert every night and you, it, you know, it makes you feel bad about yourself. You know, you don't want to. Um, you know, it makes you feel gross. So what do you do? So you still eat dessert. And then what part do you have control over? That was her thought. So we had to go back, back, back into the thought and figure out where that came from. And I kept asking her questions and what it turned out to be. And by the way, this thought tool, and this is helpful, but I almost was like, oh, I probably shouldn't have given this to them because it's almost going to overcomplicate it without additional, um, adult, without additional teaching. Um, but this is what we use in the coaching program. So um, after probably three, it took probably three coaching sessions, three like hour long coaching sessions together until we realized that what was happening with her stemmed back to when she was a child and she was rewarded for finishing her plate with dessert. So what that taught her brain at that time was every time you finish your plate, A, that's a good thing to have an empty plate and B, you are supposed to have something sweet and you deserve something sweet. So we had to go through this whole thing. And once we figured out what her thought was and that she had control over her thought, which by the way, is the only right answer for that last, last question, right? Situations, whether they're good or bad are completely neutral. Um, the way you feel is based on neurotransmitters that are released when you think and, um, when you think about certain things and then what you do is based on how you feel a lot of times, unfortunately. So she had control over her thoughts. So we had to go in and we had to reframe that thought. We had to give her, her a new thought. That's where that metacognition came, comes back in is our clients. They have to be able to think about what they're thinking about. Not only that, but they have to be able to reframe the thought or neutralize the thought. And in, um, in the coaching program, we actually do a whole, a whole week on how to identify limiting beliefs and how to help our clients move past them. This is just one of the, the tools we use to get them to start thinking about what they're thinking about so that then we can identify those limiting beliefs because they're not always that simple. Some of them have to do more with control. Some beliefs have to do with, um, yeah, like the childhood stuff. Some beliefs have to do with what they were told as a child or as even an adult or in the workplace or things that they're being told now, um, things that they've been told. We look at like their whole environment, right? Like their work environment, their um, personal environment, even like their bigger social sphere to see where these limiting beliefs are coming out. And then as a, as a instructor or personal trainer or Nemo coach, then you get to walk them through how to step into a better thought. Um, and there's a, there's a reason that the whole four weeks are spent on busting limiting beliefs or like truly bridging that mind body gap. And as a little aside here with this whole mind body thing, remember that like, if you are teaching a mind body format, like a yoga, Pilates, something like that, that's awesome. But you're only accessing the people who are coming into your, into your studio already into your classroom already, into your home, however you're teaching this, those are the only people that you are truly impacting. Um, so this whole thing is how are we going to get to the people that we don't already know? And then how can we 
access these thoughts that they might not even realize that they're having and really bridge that mind body gap to give them. I mean, the results that you get when you train this way are huge, huge results and they're lasting results because that was strategy four. We're done with strategy four, moving on to strategy five. We teach them the three S's and really there's a secret S too. So the four, the three S's that prevent relapse. The three, I say the three S's that make it stick. Early it's four, the four S's to making it stick. Um, and relapse is any time they go back to an old behavior. And it happens. I'm telling, remember I told you like me and my client, um, my client Linda, I didn't tell you her name, but that's her name. Um, she and I spent like three weeks, three sessions, just trying to change that thought. Because every time there'd be like a little bit of relapse, a little bit of relapse. I can't figure it out, I can't figure it out. Um, to this day, she still struggles with, falling back into that train of thought, but she's much better at metacognition and she's much better at talking herself out of it. Does it mean she's perfect? No, but you guys, and I'm, this is like my saying that all my clients know me for potholes are not black holes. Eventually I'm going to have t-shirts made with that, like a big poster behind me, but potholes are not black holes, right? Relapse is when you trip in a pothole. True, big, like long-term relapse is when that pothole turns into a black hole. When you have one bite of brownie <clears throat> and you decide, oh, screw it, I'm going to eat the whole pan. Or when you said you weren't going to have any alcohol this weekend, you have a drink, you say, oh, well, I'll start on Monday, right? So like there's, there's just so many versions of relapse, but we see it all the time in the fitness world. So we spend the last four weeks of the MIMO method. So as a MIMO coach, you do phase one, which is um, the simple exercises and really addressing mindset phase two, which is the action and then phase three, I call it living your best life with my clients. But for us as pros, it's really about preventing relapse or busting through plateaus. And this is where I see the fitness industry, not taking advantage of what the psychology life coaching, um, all those industries have to contribute because we do not do a great job at teaching maintenance. We just don't. There are four things that we should be teaching all of our clients that come to us. Number one is how to deal with stress. Has a lot to do with that same thought model because stress is really just a thought, um, but it's how to perceive stress, um, how to know when you're being broken down by stress, like when there's too much. And we also use the human function curve to teach our clients that you need a little bit of stress in your life to push you toward action. Just people's feeling of too much stress happens on different curves. Um, this is also where I like to teach people that like procrastination is okay as long as you get it done. Now that's something that we talk about, you know, you can talk about one with your client. It's not for tonight, but that idea of that's a really good example when people don't understand like well, stress perception. Yeah, because some people like they need to perceive a little bit of stress to be pushed to action. We just labeled them as procrastinators. Um, uh, the second thing is we teach our clients how to um, seek stillness, how to find quiet time, how to go in themselves. And I'll tell you this, where we are right now in this climate of COVID-19, people are learning already the benefit of being still, of stepping back, of having moments of quiet, of having moments of like to themselves, having moments without people all around. And they're learning that there is some benefit to stillness. Now there's, there's a lot of loneliness happening too. And that's not what I'm talking about, but I'm talking about the people that have been going, 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 and then bam. And they're, they're feeling this that you're probably feeling right now. Like they're feeling this and they're realizing that that's not necessarily a bad thing. So by having these strategies, I mean, really all the strategies here are things that people are learning on their own right now, but having the strategy to be able to teach people stillness is incredible. And unfortunately, like I don't have the time today to really, this is why you're seeing why this is really a two hour um, lecture or masterclass, but um, I don't have time to really flesh it out too much today. But I will tell you that um, in the coaching program, one thing that I do is I give you access to all of my, like my entire fitness library. It's I think like $3,000 worth of um, worth of workouts and things like that. 
including kids and prenatal and postpartum. <clears throat> but in every single workout, <clears throat> sorry, that I teach, I end them with a moment of stillness. Every single workout, not just like the yoga types or the Pilates, even the like high intensity interval training. I end them with a moment of quiet. Um, I also keep it really body positive. You know, they can do all the workouts sitting in a chair, like, yes, even the hit. So, um, that's another little bonus, but the stillness seeking stillness, if you've never really mastered the art of teaching people that stillness and that relaxation, then I just give it to you in the coaching program. So you don't actually have to know how to do this. You just have to show up. Um, then the third thing is the self-care strategies. So you probably have seen a lot of people in our um, society today tend to think that self-care is the same as treat yourself. Now, I don't know if you watch Parks and Rec, but if you do, you know what I'm talking about. If not, you've probably seen the meme. Like people out like buying expensive things and drinking the fancy champagnes, right? Like their idea of treating themselves is like this luxury moment or something super self-indulgent. But what I like to help my clients understand and what our Mimo coaches help them understand is self-care is really anything that you do that promotes positive physical health, anything. Um, and one of my personal client wins is when I was asking for testimonials and I got a testimonial in from one of my clients that said, I actually enjoy fitness now and see it as a form of self-care. And I was like, bam, like, you know, you have that moment when you're like, I did it. Um, you know, when you see the client, when they make these big wins, you're like, oh, I did it. Well, that's what makes me excited is when I see clients who are like, oh my gosh, um, you know, I just realized that self-care, like working out is actually self-care. So I just get really excited about that. And that's the kind of stuff that we teach. And we, work with our clients on identifying self-care strategies that work for them and doing that like in person. So if they start to go down this road of things that are actually going to sabotage their efforts, like, um, Oh, I'll get to go out to eat at this fancy restaurant or, I mean, mm, okay, they go either way, but they're like indulging in food that they're, they don't want to eat. They're like, well, that's not a great idea because that's throwing you off track. So we work with them on that. And then the four, the secret one, is sleep. That is the fourth S that is mandatory to get results to, um, stick. And it's actually exciting. So one of the tools that you get inside the Nemo coaching program is this, um, it's a sleep journal and you take them through, you give it to your client, you have them like track their sleep for a week. And they look at what some of the things are that were throwing their sleep off. They talk about how much they got, like what they ate and they drink. And then you go through it together and you help them create better strategies for sleep just based on what you're seeing from them. And by doing this, usually we can like unlock a little secret key to some pretty big, like, especially, especially for the clients who are plateauing, like they haven't relapsed or they've plateaued. This is huge. And it's a really good selling point um, to be able to tell your client like, hey, did you realize that the thing that you're missing is actually just sleep and you could potentially lose more weight if you do exactly what you're doing, but sleep more or better, maybe better. So that's a really, really, really cool tool. Um, and it's kind of like the secret sauce on top of this whole thing. Whenever, um, you, they feel like you've done everything and they're like, I'm still plateauing. You're like, Oh, but I've got one more thing. Um, and that's what Mimo is all about. It's about accessing the mind on all the different levels to truly put their body into motion. And the motion is the thing that you have, like, how can I help you make what you have even more impactful? attract more people, maybe give it a place to start in the virtual sphere. You could start, if you enrolled as a MIMO coach in cycle one, which is the enrollment closes um, for this cycle on Sunday, April 5th at midnight. If you enroll for this cycle as a MIMO coach, you will have the tools to get them started on the MIMO method, like in a week, two weeks, maybe. So people are still going to be in this virtual space. No one, at least most places that I know of, like people aren't returning anywhere till the end of April, at least. So we're going to be able to, 
take clients already, like get new clients in and say, Hey, look, you can do exactly what I'm doing. Friends. You can hold a zoom call, say, all right, guys, we are going to meet every week. Week one, we're all going to be talking about assessment. Here's your tool. I give you, like I hand you this whole packet uh, that has client tools. You just email them out a PDF and say, okay, here you go. And it's your program. You charge what you want. Like I, the only thing that I own is the name, the Nemo method and the strategies, right? The tool sheets and the, the notes and things, but you can add in your program and this can enhance that program on top of it. So those are the five methods that make up the Nemo method. Um, number one is make assessment fun. Two is create vision. Three is use the ramp method of behavior change. Four is bridging the mind body gap. And five is the four S's to make it stick. So um, I do want to tell you before we go, just really fast about this whole cycle one thing um, with Vimo method. So I've had the Vimo method, it's like a DIY course for people to go through, but that is not what fitness professionals need. They do not need to be in the course where I'm actually like taking them through and I'm doing the program um, because it would take you 12 weeks to get all the information. Instead, I wanted to condense it all into a five module course that you could get through in probably five weeks um, and have it set up to where as soon as you complete a module, you can start offering that to clients. So it's very much a like, get all the info from me, you sit through a lesson, um, you get the lesson notes, you have access to the client tools, so like individual PDFs of the things that you ha have in your notes that you can give them. And, um, and then you can immediately use it with your client. Um, you don't have to know how to do all the life coaching stuff. You don't need to go sit for a certification and then pick out what you think is useful. Uh, because I already know the fitness industry. This is what sets me apart from um, people who are, um, you know, trying to touch in the fitness industry, but they haven't been there. They're like, well, I think you could use this. No, here are the exact strategies that you can take from life coaching and from, you know, psychology and physiology and all this, here's the mindset stuff that works, that has been tried, that has been successful, that works with clients. I'll give it to you and you take them through on their own pace. Um, and so that is what is open to you. If you're watching me live, um, you're going to be getting an email and I highly, highly encourage you, um, or if you register for the webinar, actually, those of you that are going to catch the replay when I send it out in a minute, you register for the webinar. So you'll still have this information. But if you're watching me live, it'll be coming out to your email maybe five minutes after we end this. Um, I highly encourage you to open the email because being a part of this registering, there's a way that I want to honor you. So there's a surprise in your email. So just trust me when I say open that email. Um, and if you are not catching me live in the replay, there's a link below for a discounted rate to get into um, this first cycle one of the Mimo method, okay? So um, the if you are kind of wondering if you want more, so let's see, I did, I think I also put a, a discount link in your, yes, if you have the updated, um, if you have the updated worksheet, there's also, if you go into it, it talks a little bit more about what all you're getting, the five self-paced module, um, access to my movement library. That's what I was talking about earlier, the bonus material. Um, and then the coaching calls that's based on about five different coaching calls. Um, those are going to be held probably bi-weekly. I haven't super determined how often we're going to have those, but you can jump on and ask me live any questions that you want to ask me. So we are opening cycle one. We, it's been open this whole week. We have some people enrolled already, which makes me really excited and happy. Um, because I cannot wait to give this to more people. Um, so cycle one of the Mimo Coach program enrolling today. And if you're not sure if it's for you, if you're like, I need to figure out if this is a good fit or what I need to do, then um, you also have this page that has a link to book a free consult with me. So if you're like, okay, you said a lot of good stuff, but I'm not super sure where I want to go. Or maybe you need more help just with like yourself and your business in this environment then I want you to just contact me at that consult link. And um, if you're catching the replay, I think it's up above me where it says to um, book a call. So you should have links everywhere if you're catching the replay. And if you are um, 
If you're watching me live or you register for the webinar, you have a really good surprise coming to your inbox. So please, please make sure you check that. Otherwise, the link below gets you a discounted rate for the current coaching cycle one. And if you um, are catching this between cycles, don't worry, I've got your name and I'm, I've got you on my waiting list and I'm excited to see more of you. So thank you so much for being here. We got done in just under an hour. You were awesome. This replay link is going out. So if you were live, um, those of you that are audio, if you want to see the video, because I know we had some issues there and I was trying to help people out, then just let me know. Um, go get the replay so maybe you can watch the video and see all my sporadic hand movements. All right. I love you guys. You were awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.